明るい人間になりきるんだ私は陽キャナイトプールでサーフィンする女そしてクイーン・オブ・ウェイの名を我が物にする女ウェイエッケイエッケイバイブス上げてこーうれさんできるスイカえ違うこれは明るい人じゃなくてただのパリピだ<笑> Drop in for a roller coaster of riffs, rocking beats, most unlikely rock star you'll ever meet. When quiet meets chaos and a guitar is the only voice, pair for an electrifying tale of music, friendships, self discovery. Episode 1 Hitori's life kicks off in the unlikeliest of places. Preschool, where sharing lunches signifies the first missed chance at connection. But outside this backdrop, her world echoes with the sounds of strumming strings as Hitori finds her rhythm with a guitar. Her family watches, entranced, as days turn into nights and nights into years of practice. But with her growing mastery over music comes an isolating bubble. Friends, social life. All trade for hours with her beloved instrument. Digital notifications become Hitori's silent cheers. Cover videos go live, comments and likes flow in, yet the craving for real world acceptance lingers. High school, fresh start? Hardly. The classroom remains a battlefield, with Hitori armored in her introverted shield, but a chance encounter on a playground promises a new tune. Enter Nijika, the extroverted counter to Hitori's introvert, who sees the latent rock star and yanks Hitori into the wild world of Shimoki Tazawa and its heart, Starry, the hottest live house around. This isn't just any club, it's Nijika's realm. As Hitori tries to fit in, fingers falter, and her music skills, once impeccable, seem to desert her. The verdict? Hitori's chords are perfect. It's her communication that misses a beat, but instead of sulking, she finds a new rhythm as the hilarious Plankton Goto, with Nijika and Ryo, her unlikely bandmates. Music is just one part of the equation. The real challenge? Building connections. And amidst all this chaos, Ryo throws in a twist, christening Hitori with a catchy nickname, Boki. With a new identity and a quirky band name, Kasoku Band, the stage sets for a performance. It's electric. The crowd, the lights, the music. It's everything Hitori has ever dreamed of and more. Yet, amidst the cheering crowd, Boki faces her biggest opponent, herself. But the show has to go on, and it does, with a unique instrument, a card box. Post performance blues hit hard, and emotional Boki feels cornered. But Nijika and Ryo are right there, offering support, camaraderie. And as Boki steps out of Starry, determined to conquer her fears, every step, every bump into a stranger, and every mumbled apology is a testament to her newfound resolve. In a world where the strings of a guitar intertwine with the strings of destiny, Hitori, before we continue, take a moment to answer the question of the day Which anime do people generally look down on that you secretly love? Comment down below for a chance to be shouted out in a future video. Episode 2. Boki's nerves are frayed, and it shows. She's cooling down in her bathtub with ice. Meanwhile, onlookers Futari and Jimmy Hen are quite bemused by this chilly escapade. Flashback to a couple of days earlier at the live house. Nijika and Ryo were deep into a discussion using a dice game to direct their conversations. Talk about school. T.S. rolled up first. Nijika and Ryo revealed they both attend Shimokitazawa High School, which surprises Boki, who has a two hour commute just to avoid the very same institution. The next role, talk about favorite music, TFM, brings out Nijika's love for Japanese punk and mellow core, while Ryo confesses an affinity for Techno Kyo and Saudi Arabian charts. Boki, trying to keep up, avoids revealing her exact music preferences. In a twist, the dice dictates, talk about the concert. Leading to the discovery that the band is in desperate need of vocals. Plans are made. Boki pens lyrics. Ryo composes. The quota discussion throws everyone into a panic. Ten tickets need to be sold for the next concert. Flashbacks reveal that failing to meet quotas has had consequences before. A task is set. They need to gather 10,000 yen before their next gig. Ryo and Boki are also drawn into work at the live house, where a misadventure with the manager earns Boki an unexpected nickname Mango Common, masked Mango. As Boki dives into the world of waitressing at the live house, her timid nature results in comedic mishaps. Serving drinks becomes a monumental challenge. Amidst this, a new band, Alexandism, takes the stage, allowing Boki a moment to lose herself in the music. The allure of the live house becomes evident, and despite her initial reluctance, Boki warms up to the rhythm of it. However, as the night ends and Boki leaves work, 
She can't help but feel the weight of the day, but the support from Nijika and Ryo reminds her that every hurdle crossed is a step taken. Back at home, despite her enthusiasm, a fever catches up to her, highlighting the toll the day has taken. Episode 3 Boki finds herself in a contemplative mood, remembering her part-time job at a live house and pondering over her introverted nature. After a brief stint with her guitar, she heads off to school. Upon arriving at school, Boki unintentionally creates a scene, displaying surprise over a classmate's capability to stream backwimps, which leads to her awkwardly failing to initiate a conversation. During lunchtime, Boki faces the isolating experience of eating alone. Her vision of becoming a renowned guitarist is juxtaposed against the judgmental stares from her peers. Her quiet lunchtime observance is disrupted by the noise coming from the floor above. There, she encounters Kita, whom she had met before. Their exchange turns humorous, with both trying to beatbox. Shifting gears, Boki showcases her musical talent with the song Double Dark Past Boki Acoustic Version. Kita, impressed, engages with Boki. However, their conversation reveals Kita's inability to play the guitar, leading to a heartwarming moment where Boki offers to teach her. As the school day winds down, Boki gets a message from Nijika about procuring energy drinks. A rendezvous at Shimokitazawa Station reveals Kita's past association with a band and her reluctance to return to the live house. Nijika's playful ambush of Kita, humorously nicknaming her the runaway guitarist, lightens the mood, but it becomes clear that Kita's relationship with her past band, Kasoku Band, has some unresolved issues, where Kita, donning a maid outfit, joins Boki and Nijika in working there. The workplace shenanigans are aplenty, from Boki's struggle with serving drinks to Nijika amidst these moments. Boki's desire to be part of a band and achieve popularity comes to the forefront, particularly after watching a band member on TV. Kita's aspirations become evident too. She's keen on joining the Kasoku band and getting closer to Ryo Senpai. But personal obstacles stand in her way, causing concern for Boki. Post work, a series of misunderstandings and revelations unfold. Boki finds out about Kita's past involvement with the band, how she fled before a significant concert, and her strong admiration for Ryo. In a turn of events, Nijika persuades Boki to teach Kita to play the guitar, fostering a chance for Kita to join Kasoku band. Episode 4 Rain pours down. Soaking the streets, Ryo is out there, her eyes darting around, looking for that special band collab poster. Inside a cozy studio, Kita's trying hard. She's great with her guitar, but when she tries to sing along, things don't go so smoothly. She wonders, if I just sang, I stand around during breaks, maybe shout, yeah, a couple of times. She's so determined that Boki almost needs sunglasses to look at her. Boki has her own problem. She can't seem to sing along with Kita. Their voices just don't match. Ryo hears about a new way to play the guitar. It's different. It's cool. But Kita? She wants to stick to what she knows. Nijika has a plan. She's meeting the rest of Kasoku Band at a place where bands play live music. Kita and Boki are really excited. They can't stop clapping. Ryo's not sure why. Nijika has a big question for everyone. How can we act more like a real band? Boki thinks about it. Maybe Kita should take a break from playing so much. Suddenly, Nijika starts copying a makeup trick Kita talked about, making everyone laugh. The group then chats about the band's special items they're selling, colorful cable ties. Ryo's got the prices sorted out, and Kita teases her about them being cheap. Then Kita gets a fun idea. She'll start an Isosta page and post stuff about the band. Nijika reminds them of something important. They need to write a song. Ryo's job? Make the music. Bulky? She has to come up with words. This is new for Boki, and she feels a bit lost. A week goes by. Boki is stuck. Instead of words, she's just scribbling in her notebook. She does find an old book from school with some of her old song ideas, but she's not sure about them. The group decides to go to Shimokitazawa. It's a cool place, and they want to take some band photos called Profos, try lots of fun poses. They ride small kid rides, chat about their instruments, and chase each other around. But they also see that some of their favorite places, like music shops, are closed. They really want a photo that shows them as a band. After a few funny photo attempts, Kita suggests a jumping photo. They try it, and after a few jumps, they get a great shot. Even with this fun, Boki remembers she still hasn't written the song words. She's tired, but knows she needs to finish. Then something strange happens. Ryo is gone. No one knows where. Boki finds her later in a cute cafe. They chat about the song, and Ryo gives Boki some advice. They also share some personal stories. This chat helps Boki a lot. Back with the band, Boki shares the words she wrote. Everyone listens. Nijika is happy. She thinks the words are just right. At home, Boki sticks the words on her wall. It's a big moment for her. As she falls asleep, she hopes that Kasoku Band will always be together. Episode 5 Today is payday. Everyone is cheering. 
Boki pulls out her money, 10,000 yen. She thinks about how to spend it. Nijika has a different plan. She wants to save the money for their concert. They all listen to a song called A Farewell to Yukichi. Nijika says sorry to Boki and Kida for something. Suddenly, Ryo points at Boki's cheek with a drumstick. Everyone laughs. Kida and Nijika chat. Making an album costs a lot. Nijika wants to sell them at concerts and even shoot a music video. Kida thinks she might need a summer job to pay for it. Maybe Nijika could work at a beach house. Boki is surprised and looks at a website called Ushushi Finance. Ryo talks to her, and Boki lets Ryo borrow her guitar. Ryo writes a song. When Nijika and Kita hear it, they like it a lot. Ryo pats Boki's chin and thanks her for the good lyrics. Nijika has news. She wants their band to play a concert next month. But the manager says no. There was a bad concert last May, and the manager doesn't want that again. Nijika is mad and leaves. Ryo shows her a funny picture of Nijika sleeping with stuffed animals. Kita and Ryo try to find Nijika and make sure she's okay. At a food truck, Nijika gets a juice. Kita asks her about the bad concert from last time. Boki comes, looking tired. She says they should audition if they want to play at the live house. Kita remembers hearing Boki sing at school before. They all want to go back to the live house, but Boki needs to go somewhere else. At Shuka High School, Kita and Boki practice the guitar. Kita helps Boki get better and believes in her. They both want to do well at the audition. Later, the band practices more. They want to show they are a good band. Kita hurts her finger, and Ryo tries to help. Nijika drums at home while cooking. Everyone is tired but excited for the audition. By a vending machine, Nijika scares Boki, and they get drinks. They talk about their dreams. Nijika has a special dream but doesn't share it yet. On audition day, Kasoku Band plays a song called Guitar, Solitude, and The Blue Planet. They want to impress the manager. After they play, the manager says they were good but had some mistakes. Still, they pass the audition. Everyone is happy, especially Boki. Kita even hugs her so tight Boki almost gets sick. Later, Kita wants to take a band photo. Boki cleans the floor first. The manager watches her. Then, Pennsylvania. San tells the manager she liked the band from the start. The manager smiles. The band is excited. They have to sell 15 tickets for their concert, but only five are left. Boki jokes that her family and even her dog might buy them. Everyone laughs and feels hopeful for the future. Episode 6 the episode begins with a recap from The Guitar Man, highlighting Boki's challenges as a socially anxious guitar enthusiast. Boki's band is excited about their potential performance, but the manager informs them that they must first pass an audition, but they face another challenge, selling a quota of tickets. Boki struggles with a dilemma at home, deciding whom among her family members should get a ticket for the concert. Her mother points out that their dog and young sister can't attend. This results in Boki facing an inner conflict. Determined, Boki creates promotional flyers. But after reading online advice from the guitar man, she tosses them out, feeling powerless. As she reads messages on her phone, angelic versions of her bandmates Nijika, Ryo, and Kida try to encourage her. A sudden twist happens when Boki encounters Hiroi, a drunken woman. Their interaction leads to a comical exchange, and Boki helping Hiroi recover from her hangover. Hiroi, revealing her own musical background as a bassist, takes Boki on a journey to find her lost bass. At the live house, Boki's bandmates, Ryo and Kida, express their concerns about her absence, with Ryo particularly worried. Hiroi finally introduces Boki to the concept of street concerts as an effective way to sell their tickets. The two put up a performance, and though it starts rocky, with Boki's nerves almost getting the best of her, they eventually win over the audience. The episode has some humorous moments, including Hiroi's continued drinking and the police intervening in their performance. Boki has sold almost all of her tickets. Hiroi, in a gesture of kindness, buys the last one. However, instead of giving Boki the money, she takes it as train fare, adding some comedic relief. I conclude with a hopeful Boki. Fireworks in the background and her renewed determination for the upcoming concert. Episode 7 at a vending machine, Nijika hydrates while Kida is engrossed in her phone, both anticipating their visit to Boki's house. The mention of a cardboard box evokes laughter and nostalgia. At Boki's residence, Boki is a bundle of nerves as she waits. Her surprise welcome for her friends goes hilariously wrong with party poppers. Amid the chaos, Kida offers a movie and sweets. A looming concert demands the design of new t-shirts, and they muse over their missing member, Ryo, who's dealing with endless personal issues. Family dynamics come into play when Boki's younger sister, Futari, makes an appearance, showcasing her peculiar relationship with Boki. Stories of family quirks and a possessed sister have the visitors in splits. The primary goal remains, designing the t-shirts. Kida's initial design receives mixed reviews, and a trip down Boki's traumatic sports festival memories has everyone in splits. 
Unexpectedly, a weird turn of events finds Boki mysteriously turning to ash while Boki's concerned parents debate dessert choices. Days later, the band regroups, showcasing their finalized t-shirt design. Despite Boki's awkwardness about wearing her own design, the band, now complete with Rio, is pleased. But nature seems to have other plans, with a typhoon brewing. Amid their preparations for the concert, old childhood rituals like crafting Taru Taru Bozu, rain dolls, resurface. As the storm rages on, Boki's efforts to sway the weather with her Taru Taru Bozu leaves her disappointed. Yet, hope for their upcoming concert and a stronger bond among the band members persist. Episode 8 the scene starts with P.A. San cleaning up, meticulously wiping her clothes and damp hair with a towel, a gesture that didn't escape Boki's attention. Above, a Taru Taru Bozu hangs that small, white, handmade doll, usually crafted to bring about good weather. It's clear that Nijika and her bandmates made it. As P.A. San observes the dangling doll, she contemplates the manager's skepticism about its power over the weather. In a moment of vulnerability, she admits she hopes the band won't be heartbroken by the potentially sparse crowd. Outside, the typhoon's grip on the city tightens, forcing many to cancel their plans, among them Kida's friends and Boki's family. Boki feels the sting of disappointment even more acutely. The mounting cancellations cast a shadow of worry on Kida. She fears the audience will be thinner than expected and wonders how Nijika, with her ever-present enthusiasm, will handle it. Amidst the anxiety, Ryo, oblivious to the world, catches a few winks on Nijika's shoulder. Suddenly, the doors of the live house are pushed open, and Hiroi, drenched from the rain, steps in. She recognizes Boki immediately. When Boki inquires about Hiroi's connection to the manager, the latter reveals that they shared a collegiate bond. Without missing a beat, Hiroi excitedly proposes a post-concert celebration at a local izakaya. The atmosphere lightens considerably when two self-proclaimed fans of Boki, whom she had encountered during a street concert, walk in. Their energetic presence and faith in Boki's mysterious. However, as the start time approaches, anxiety returns. They consider streaming the concert instead. The idea seems apt given the worsening rain. Glancing at her phone, Kida announces the forecast isn't in their favor. This sets the mood for the concert, a blend of determination and unease. The lights dim, and Kida steps up, introducing their band, Kasoku Band. Her introduction is uncharacteristically formal, reflecting the nerves that grip them all. As the first chords of guitar, solitude, and the blue planet fill the room, Boki's apprehensions grow. The performance isn't smooth. Kida's voice quivers, Nijika's drumbeat lags, and the harmony between Ryo and Nijika seems off-kilter. Even Hiroi, with her carefree headbanging, can't mask the apparent discord. The worst happens when a long-haired girl, seemingly disinterested, walks out mid-performance. However, despite these setbacks, the group pushes on. They start their next number, with the recording engineer optimizing the sound. The band finds its rhythm much to the delight of Boki's fans. As the applause rings out, the atmosphere transforms. The manager's smile and Hiroi's photographs she promptly shares on social media are testament to the band's recovery. After the concert, celebrations ensue at the izakaya. Hiroi, after a bit too much to drink, recounts a memory from one of her past gigs, leading to a moment of hilarity. Amidst the revelry, Boki battles her own insecurities and dreams. Outside the bar, Nijika and Boki share a poignant moment. Nijika opens up about her past, her mother's death, her absent father, and the bond with her sister, who inspired her love for music. Nijika's real dream is unveiled. She aspires to elevate the status of Starry by making their band famous. Boki, in turn, speaks of her dreams. She vows to make Kasoku Band renowned, to a point where she won't have to worry about finishing school. As the night deepens, the two bond over their shared dreams, sealing their commitment to the band's success. Episode 9 the serene echo of a guitar fills Boki's room. Amidst the reminiscence of Kasoku Band's recent concert, she strums her guitar, lost in the harmonics. The room is a picture of a musician's serenity. Headphones on, guitar in hand, with Jimi Hen and Futari sharing a peaceful moment by her side. Boki's mind drifts. It's the last day of summer, and tomorrow, reality kicks back in. She recalls Nijika's invitation to hang out and visit her workplace. Deciding to finalize the plans, Boki's fingers hover over the call button, but a glance at the clock stops her. Too late, she sighs. Meanwhile, elsewhere, Nijika is brewing coffee for her sister. Ryo's attention is on a t-shirt design, and Kida captures a moment with a friend on her camera. An abrupt change of scene takes us to a spaceman discussing the general theory of relativity, a quirky digression that Boki stumbles upon during a late-night video binge. 
Concern starts to show on Kida's face when she notices Boki's aloofness post-concert. She's been lost in her thoughts, Kida tells the group, recounting how Boki got sidetracked making cicada graves and oddly mentioning keto carotenoids. But Boki's moods are unpredictable. As the last day of summer vacation ends, the band contemplates their next meetup. Boki, however, is preoccupied with learning the guitar, a quest inspired by Futari's prowess. Unfortunately, their individual schedules conflict, leaving little time to reconnect. The train ride to Katase and Oshima becomes a revelatory journey. Conversations revolve around school experiences. Kita talks about her school's liberal policies and fun cultural fests. In contrast, Nijika's is more rigorous. Through their chatter, Ryo's lackadaisical approach to exams becomes evident, leaving Kita both amused and concerned. As they approach their destination, Boki's apparent disdain for school becomes a focal point, culminating in her dramatic revelation of wanting to drop out. Scenic beauty of Katase and Oshima gives the group a welcome diversion. They indulge in beach activities, from snapping photos to savoring local delicacies like Takosin. Yet, a fun day at the beach takes a quirky turn when a tanned stranger approaches Boki, triggering a chaotic scene that ends in laughter. An unexpected challenge presents itself when the group decides to climb a hill. Boki's fatigue is palpable, and the suggestion of an escalator seems like divine intervention. They ascend, their tiredness melting away with each moment, especially when Ryo spots a guitar shop. But the pinnacle of their trip is the tower visit. Here, the beauty of the place contrasts with the amusingly mundane, as Ryo's favorite part becomes the air conditioning. No beach trip is complete without ice cream. As they savor their treats, mischievous bird adds a comedic twist, snatching Boki's ice cream and leading to a series of slapstick moments. Their day culminates with a visit to a shrine, where they make wishes for their band's future success. A nostalgic Boki wishes for a summer do-over, a sentiment that resonates with many. The return journey is a reflective one. The members share their favorite moments and look forward to future gigs. Despite the exhaustion, Boki's spirits seem lifted. Her hesitation about school is still there, but Kida assures her of their continued camaraderie. The next morning, however, reality hits hard. Every muscle in Boki's body protests, making even the simplest movement a challenge. Futari's attempts to wake her fail. The looming dread of school seems to anchor her to the bed. Kida's cheerful greeting at Shuka High School contrasts with Boki's struggle to start her day. Episode 10 Boki's dream was disrupted by a rapid applause, an admiration for Goto from Shuka High School. With drool dripping from the side of her mouth, she wakes up, finding herself in the midst of a school festival discussion. The suggestion by Class 2s is an interesting one. A maid in Butler Cafe with Boki herself dressed as a maid. She recalls her middle school days when she was never part of such an endeavor. The bridge between reality and dream blurs as she visualizes herself in the live house, where her band feels less like a passionate endeavor and more like a chore. As she prepares to submit her application form for the festival, she finds herself in the student council room, her head bowed. Recognizing her talent as a professional guitarist, she feels a sudden rush of emotions and collapses. When she regains consciousness, Consciousness, an unfamiliar ceiling greets her. Kida, her concerned classmate, informs her that she heard about Boki's collapse. Their conversation is cut short by Kida's phone, which announces plans with friends. Boki insists Kida should go, and once alone gets haunted by the concert video that pops up on her phone. A flashback to her band's introduction by the student council paints the screen, but the excitement proves too much for her to handle. She collapses yet again, tossing her application form aside. Back in the live house, Seika, another member, notices Boki's distant demeanor. The ambience takes a nostalgic turn when they reminisce about past performances, especially Nijika's time in middle school. It's here where a revelation is made. Nijika never performed with Ryo during any school festival. The memories of a particular event where Ryo played unconventional songs which weren't well received by the audience still haunt Boki. Night finds Boki in contemplation at home. The next day at school, she's distracted by thoughts of her band and live house performances. When Kita calls, she's taken aback to learn about Boki's potential participation in the culture festival performance. At the live house, a string of events unfold with Hiroi offering Boki tickets and the revelation of Hiroi's past with her band, Sick Hack. There's a thrilling segment at Shinjuku's live house fault, where Boki is introduced to the vibrant world of live concerts and meets the iconic Jinjiro Yoshida. Post-concert, Hiroi shares her transformation from a gloomy high schooler to a spirited rock musician with Boki. The raw energy of the environment rubs off on her, leading to a hilarious incident where Hiroi damages a wall in her overenthusiasm. At a nearby restaurant, the band gathers, their spirits high post the concert. Nijika's infectious enthusiasm is palpable, and their camaraderie shines through in the playful banter about bassists and food sharing. As the band prepares for their cultural festival performance, Boki is filled with a mix of anticipation and anxiety. Episode 11 
Shuka High School buzzes with activity as students, teachers, and visitors gather for the eagerly awaited culture festival. Nijika and Ryo, filled with anticipation, wander around, eager to soak in every experience. Their journey leads them to Class 2's standout attraction, a haunted house. While they deliberate entering, a mysterious girl, her curiosity piqued, decides to take the plunge. As they discuss their next move, Nijika feels a nudge of realization. Boki's class must be close by. Locating her classroom, they find not Boki, but her friend, Kida. Kida informs them of Boki's recent predicament. She's been dressed in a maid costume and has since gone missing after a restroom break. Elsewhere, Boki finds a quiet corner. She retrieves her phone and begins scrolling through comments on her online channel. The feedback isn't kind. Already overwhelmed by the day, these remarks add to her despair. She longs for a place to hide, engrossed in her online world. Boki's band spots her. Concerned about her state, they debate the best approach. Nijika and Kida's search brings them to this spot. Together, they manage to persuade her to rejoin the festivities. With Boki back in the fold, the friends decide to dive headfirst into the festival's offerings. They venture into the haunted house, eliciting a mix of reactions. Ryo remains stoic, while Nijika and Kida jump at every opportunity. Boki feels a blend of exhilaration and apprehension. Their adventure continues as they treat themselves to handmade crepes, and Ryo showcases her impeccable shooting skills at a gallery. The day's twilight finds the group at a maid cafe. Boki, clad in her maid attire, does her best to cater to customers. It soon becomes a comedic scene when they realize that the Omaris, despite its fancy names, is uniformly the same. Kida even tries on a maid costume. As the day turns to evening, their focus shifts to the concert scheduled for the next day. They head to the gymnasium for practice. Here, Boki shares the story behind her old guitar, a memento from her father. The group then brainstorm their emsing strategy for the upcoming performance. Night descends, and everyone prepares in their unique ways. Nijika reviews the schedule. Seika chills with some TV. Kida refines her makeup skills, and Ryo immerses herself in music. The next day, excitement fills the air. Boki, with a mixture of hope and anxiety, wonders about a record producer being among the audience. But in a twist, it's the infamous guitar man who's present. As concert time draws near, Kida takes the reins, guiding everyone through calming breathing exercises. Nijika initiates a morale-boosting group huddle. Soon, it's showtime. With an enthusiastic cheer from the audience, Kasoku Band claims the stage. Introductions echo, and soon, the first notes of their song reverberate through the gymnasium. The atmosphere electrifies. This culture festival is, without doubt, a day they'll never forget. Episode 12 the stage is set at Shuka High School, and as Kasoku Band takes their positions, Nijika uses a stick to catch the audience's attention. The first song begins with Kida's rhythmic clapping. Boki's father, ever the supportive parent, records the concert, ensuring that this moment will never be forgotten. Amidst the sea of people, Seika finds herself in a delicate situation, holding on to Hiroi. Other students cheer and clap in rhythm, drawn into the musical trance. Boki, despite the pressure, radiates happiness, and the scene occasionally shifts to familiar places. The rooftop, the library, and Boki's classroom. Places filled with memories for her. With the band pausing momentarily, Kida introduces their song, I Will Never Forget. Unexpectedly, the audience's cheer is more for Kida than the song. This baffles Boki, leading her to nervously adjust her guitar. When it's time for a few words between songs, the dynamic within the band becomes evident. Ryo warns Nijika about the pitfalls of M-Sing. A small blunder arises when Kida mistakenly calls Boki by her nickname, quickly correcting herself with Boki's full name. With minor hiccups aside, the band moves on to their next song, To Become a Constellation. However, Boki's piece is short-lived. As the song progresses, she feels something is off with her guitar, particularly the E string. Her fears come to fruition when the string snaps and she panics, knowing her solo is looming. All seems lost, but Boki finds inspiration in Kida's adaptability. Grabbing a bottleneck, she improvises a solo, drawing admiration from the audience. Post-song, the audience's applause fills Boki with newfound confidence. Yet before the band's last song, Boki finds herself pushed into the spotlight by Kida, asking her to say a few words. Overwhelmed and recalling Hiroi's antics from a previous concert, Boki does the unthinkable. She dives into the audience. Awakening in the infirmary, Boki is consumed with guilt, believing she ruined the concert. However, her friends assure her otherwise. Amidst these conversations, Boki's memories lead her to the maid cafe drawing connections between the day's events. An unexpected twist occurs when Boki's father reveals a surprising fact. The guitar she believed she had broken was actually designed to do so. To make matters even more perplexing, Boki learns that her father has been secretly monetizing her videos online, leading to a small fortune in accumulated funds. With newfound financial freedom, Boki considers her options. 
After much contemplation, she decides to buy a new guitar. The band's journey to the music store in Okanomizu Station is filled with discoveries and hilarity. From Nijika eyeing guitar straps to Ryo testing out bass guitars, their adventures culminate with Boki finally choosing her new instrument. Although she momentarily forgets it in the store, it's safely retrieved marking the end of a chaotic but fulfilling day. Back at home, Boki takes a moment to appreciate her new guitar, all while paying homage to the old. As she steps outside, she contemplates her next move in the music world. The credits roll, but a hint emerges about Boki's plans. A new job awaits, 